Okay, so when it comes to the business type questions, um, there's really a lot of stuff that's different. So what I kind of wanted to do is start by putting like a little plan together. Um, I've got on the first couple of slides, I've got six things. Um, charitable contributions we'll talk about a little later, but essentially um, one of the strategies, you know, and one of the decisions I think people have had to make for a long time is whether a payment to a charity is really advertising or a donation. And I think looking harder at the, the difference between those two types of payments is something that um, if you're here representing a business, we can talk to you about that. If you're here representing a charity, you know, would recommend that you start offering those kind of things because there's an ability to get an enhanced deduction and still support the same charities that you, you've always been uh, involved with. Um, this isn't specific to the new law, but there's, there have been some pretty significant changes to partnerships. Um, one of the things that partnerships may have to do is designate a representative to sort of work with the IRS on audit matters. <clears throat> and audit adjustments are going to be charged to the partnership rather than passed out to partners. Um, which might not pe make people happy if you have changes in ownership. So your partners have to, there's elections that you can make to remedy this problem. There's one that's available to small taxpayers um, with less than 100 partners. And <clears throat> there's another push out election to, um, to use the old method, I guess, of sending that adjustment out to the partners to report. Um, if you have changes in ownership, I guess you could have a situation where someone who's left the partnership is now getting their tax paid for them on behalf of the people who are still there. And that's the kind of thing you're going to have to meet amongst your partners and update your partnership agreements to decide how do you want to handle the situation and do you want to make those annual elections. Um, finally, there's a credit for Paid Family Medical Leave Act. That was Susan Collins' addition to the bill. So. I think it applies to Maine. Somebody does a lot more with HR than you can tell me, but as far as I can see, <laughs> California, New Jersey, New York, and maybe a handful of other states are the only ones that require paid family medical leave. You can now get a uh, tax credit if you choose to pay this, um, but that's the catch is it has to be voluntary on your part. Another thing where you can just consider whether this is worth it to you and if you want to update your HR and your, your benefit policies accordingly. Um, finally, the new withholding tables are out, and my understanding is that in February, software providers are going to be able to apply those new withholding tables, but it's going to be based on your own W-4. So one thing you might want to look at is filling out a new W-4 if your withholdings need to change as a result of anything else we talked about in this tax act. Um, so those are the things that I thought were sort of yes or no, e easy enough to take care of once you know about them. This is kind of a summary of all those things with a few others. Maybe the most significant one on here, like kind of exchanges, you know, essentially you have one piece of property, you swap it for something else that's very similar. Um, oftentimes that, that's a vehicle trade-in, you go to the dealership, give them your car, get a new car. Um, if there's any gain built into that transaction, you get to defer it. They have changed the rules to have that only apply to real estate, not cars, boats, equipment, planes, anything else like that. Um, there's transitional rules if you're in the middle of one right now. Uh, but going forward, that's not only going to be an option for equipment. Okay, so with that being said, the next category is where we're going to spend most of the rest of our time. And these are the things where the answer for your business is going to be very fact specific. Um, it's going to be difficult to give kind of a one size fits all answer. Um, the first thing is the pass through income deduction. That's the 20% reduction in income. Uh, big one is the big exclusion there, limited to, to pass through type entities that aren't service businesses, not accountants or lawyers or brokers or people like that. Um, there's thresholds that are based on W-2 wages and capital that we can go through, but essentially this is one where you're going to have to understand how these rules apply to you and figure out, are you going to get the full 20% or do you need to do something different in order to get that? Um, very similar to that, <clears throat> loss of the business interest deduction has always been in the press quite a bit. It's not a total loss. Um, they're going to allow some amount of interest, which is again based on the calculation. It depends upon other things, your projected income for the year and your depreciation. So you can figure out now how much this is going to affect you, but you're going to have to put in a little bit of work and probably work with your accountant to get there. 
Um, I think that's a good number to know, though, by the time the end of the year rolls around. And I'd probably also say it's time to update, you know, review and update loan agreements, make sure interest rates are still appropriate, and look at the terms and things like that, because the interest you pay is going to be hugely, uh, the interest deduction is, is going to be massively changed versus 2017. And then finally, there's a new limitation on excess business losses that kind of puts an overall limit on how much you can deduct in the primary problem there. Um, many of you have probably heard me talk about when you incur a loss in your business, there's a lot of hurdles you got to cross before you can actually deduct that and get the benefit on your return. You got a basis, you got an amount of risk, um, you can't be limited by the passive loss rules, you got to be active in it. Now finally they're adding this thing that says after you cross all those other hurdles, if the aggregate of all your trader business activities is greater than $250,000 or 500000 if you're married by the jointly, you're now going to lose that, um, at least in the current year, any excess losses will be carried forward. So it really limits your ability to use those against um, wages and guaranteed payments, investment income, retirement income. Um, these are some of the alternatives. We'll go into these a little bit more in depth. I think the one people said they're most interested in is whether they should convert from an S corporation to a C corporation, taking advantage of a lower tax rate, which again, you're going to have to do some work to figure out if that should apply to you. Um, I want to talk real quick about the R&D credit. I might skip this because we're a little busy some time, but the short answer is in 2016, the R&D credit was expanded to make it a lot more attractive to individuals. Um, these law changes have also made it very attractive to corporations by taking away the a t for corporations, which was the thing that limited a lot of people from getting benefit from it. Um, more people can, I guess more businesses do something that qualifies as R&D than currently think they do. I've heard kind of the rule of thumb that if you've got an engineer on staff, you probably do something that's eligible for this credit. Um, and usually the people who prepare R&D credit studies give you kind of a free assessment. So there's very little risk to, to seeing if you qualify. <coughs> Another reason to <coughs> take a closer look at any R&D expenses you might have is in a few years, um, you're going to lose the ability to take a current deduction for those. So this happened after 2021. Um, but you're going to have to start accounting for your R&D costs separately and capitalizing those and then depreciating it for like five years or maybe 15 if you're at 70 plus. 